We're moving out this week on another episode of Military Collectors. Got some surprises for you. Danville, Virginia, the world's largest collection of armor and artillery pieces. All that and a whole lot more this week on Military Collectors. Roger that. Welcome to this week's Military Collectors. We are in the heart of Danville, Virginia at the American Armor Foundation Tank Museum. And I tell you what, I have the honor and privilege of having both the founders and the one that let him do it, <laughs> William Gasser and his wife, Karen. They started this wonderful collection here. And I have to shake your hand, my friend, okay? But I also, I need to probably give you a hug, okay? <laughs> yeah, because you know, behind every great collector, there is a better woman who lets him do it. So, you know, really, I want to start with the, the history behind this wonderful collection, okay? 300,000 square feet. Tell me about the beginning, okay? And then, then I'm going to talk to you about why you let him do it. Did you ever have a really silly idea when you were younger and have nobody around to talk you out of it? Like, yeah, I can do that, right? There's a lot of tombstones that say on it, hey, watch this. That's how this came about. Didn't know any better, thought it could be done. And if you don't know something's impossible, you can just do it. Well, I have to ask you, William, I mean, it takes, I mean, I know the collection 1981, it kind of moved in a different direction, but where did you start? I know you were in New York. Yes. Uh, as a collector from a tut, in my day, instead of playing baseball, football, I never learned those things. I was hunting down military artifacts until by the time I was 17 and marched off to college, I had the largest uniform collection for a juvenile in the state of New York. Right? And it just was always one more thing, one more thing. Sold my collection, went to college. After I got married, I always had a couple holy grails that I had to have, and oh, I found one and got it. Oh, that was like giving drugs to a, you know, an old druggie. You just off you go, you're crazy. You just can't stop. If you got a penny in your pocket, you just gotta go for the next hunt. 120 tanks and artillery pieces, and. 15, 20,000 artifacts. <laughs> we can't count them. There's so many we're still counting. <laughs> and you know what's so unique about this, Carrot, is, okay, it, it's, you can't even put it all out. It's, it, it's yeah. you know, I mean, listen, have you followed this passion uh, with a good with a good face? With a good heart? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, absolutely. I think the word absolutely. is drafted. Yeah. yeah oh, she was drafted into this. Yeah. yeah. A lot but, of things I've done, I just, I'm just going to do this, honey, and show yeah, yeah, okay, you know, okay, and didn't really... Think he was going to yeah. do it? Yeah. <laughs> Obsessive, compulsive, way beyond that. I had a young lady come in here and said, William, are you eccentric? I said, no, I'm just plain crazy. Yeah. you got to be crazy. You just take convention, throw it out the window, and just do what you want to do. And if you can do it, great. If not, well, it was a nice ride. <laughs> well, Karen, I've got to ask you, what is your favorite aspect of this? Of course, I know you've kind of grown into this, but what do you think you like the most? Is, is it the armor vehicles? Is it is it the uniforms? Well, what is it that, that your passion is about? It's meeting the veterans that come through our door. There you go. Mm -hmm. You know, the stories. Oh. Um, you don't hear about this in the history books. Or you don't teach about this in schools. So this is an opportunity for someone to come out, especially on today, Veterans Day. You know, when we have veterans here in the museum, you know, other people can come and talk to those veterans mm -hmm. on a one-to-one -one personal basis. That's what really gets to me. Well, you know, and, and God bless you for that, because again, I know all the veterans across the country um, uh, feel somewhat underappreciated for mm -hmm. what all they've done, but that's all changing, mm -hmm. uh, which is a good thing. But you know, William, I, I have to ask you, what is your most favorite piece? Okay, I know there's- They haven't ba built it yet. They haven't <laughs> built it yet. <laughs> okay. okay. Everything I look at is a piece of art and a piece of history. I did learn a long time ago as a little guy that lining up all your metal and saying, I'm a technology museum, is rather single-sided, if you will, okay? I found out it's not the hunk of metal, it's the story, okay? And I'm a storyteller, that's really what I am, okay? And how it interrelates, interrelates with the person. I've had the, the blessing on earth to talk to hundreds of thousands of veterans, and boy, have I heard stories, okay? All right? I wish I could disseminate that amongst the public and say, you just wouldn't believe, okay? It's like an old monster movie, like, you can't believe the things I've seen before they, you know, he expires. It's the same idea. The things I've been exposed to and have seen and read, items in this collection you'll never see daylight, that I wish I could just wave them all over the planet and say, you got to read this. You just got to read it. It's just so cool. We're trying to do that here and tell the story, exhibitize the tanks, put them in their proper tableau. You're not going to just hit the people here. You want to hit them here, okay? And that's our goal. And we have more muraled exhibits and full-blown exhibits than just 
pretty tanks lined up. Nothing wrong with pretty tanks lined up, but that is just so, so one-sided. It's a way bigger story from that. We want our guests to take something home with them. And it's emotional. When we come back from commercial break, we'll feature more tanks and equipment from the AAF Tank Museum located in Danville, Virginia. Military Collectors is brought to you today by GovPlanet, your online auction site for government equipment, by Chevrolet, Chevrolet, find new roads, and by the South Carolina National Guard Museum. Discover the Palmetto State's military... Welcome. Hi. Today we're going to be comparing the roll-formed high-strength steel bed of the Chevy Silverado to the aluminum bed of this competitor's truck. Nice. Want to grab that empty toolbox for me? Let's start here with the aluminum bed. That's wow, a big hole. Huge. We got Swiss cheese for a truck here. <laughs> I'm curious to see if that will do the same thing with the Chevy. Well, let's find out. Same spot, same angle, same empty toolbox. Took it way better. The steel held up. Silverado proved it is the toughest truck here. If you're in the market for military surplus for recreation or construction, or you just want to own a piece of military history, go online to GovPlanet.com's weekly auction. GovPlanet has auctions every Wednesday, where you can find and bid on numerous items. All items are protected by ironclad assurance, which makes sure that what's in GovPlanet's report is what you're getting. Be sure to join GovPlanet every Wednesday for their weekly auction, and check in often to see their ever-changing inventory. GovPlanet, your online auction site for government equipment. Northside, performance outdoor footwear for the whole family. Roger that. Welcome back to this week's Military Collectors. You've heard a little bit about the history from both Karen and William Gasser about how they started this massive collection, but I tell you what, websites and even today's show is not going to do this collection justice. I've got the number one son here, Dan Gasser, Dan, his wife, Natasha, and his brother Doug absolutely have a monumental feat here of keeping up this wonderful museum. Dan, I gotta tell you, how do you do this? And, and the enormity of this collection that your mom and dad have left you guys. It's a passion. You know, you gotta have the love for it, and we do. You know, my family is just diehard this. You know, we wanna see the memories stay alive, you know, and that's what we're all about. The museum, you know, the, the, the men and women who've served in this stuff, is great for this, okay? You know, we love that, and we, we try to portray that to the guests, you know? Well, tell me about the, the, the collection itself, okay? I know Tank Museum, American Armor Foundation, Tank Museum, okay? But I know we got a couple of them in the background, but how many total are here? We have over 120 tank and heavy artillery, so cannons, you know, big mortars, stuff like that. Uh, over 30,000 small artifacts, so pins, patches, medals, machine guns, rifles, uh, on display. Uh, there's probably 2,000 uniforms in storage right now, just waiting to come out. Um, we're in a 330,000 square foot facility, you know, and you see it, it's pretty much full of tanks. <laughs> you know, wow, so well, kind of well let's kind of walk and talk just a little bit, because again, what I think is most interesting here is, it's not all pristine, Correct. it's not all restored. How many of these vehicles and track vehicles actually run, basically? Maybe half, okay. give or take a few days. You know, they do sit a long time, so you know, gas stuff is super finicky. Diesel stuff's a whole lot user friendly, you know. Um, you know, some of our machine guns and, and weapons are live, you know, yeah. mortars, cannons, stuff like that, operational, you know, stuff like that, or rifles. Plus, I understand, you know, you do a lot of great events here throughout the year, okay? Radio control tank battles. Uh, looking forward to seeing the flamethrower demonstration, okay? <laughs> and, and later in the show, Dan and his brother are going to actually activate flamethrowers. When's the last time you saw that, okay? Yeah, military collectors. Ah. Well, you know, you got folks who must come in and volunteer, like Correct. fixing this M2. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, what other are they all American? Uh, armor no. pieces? No, we, we, we specialize in tank and cavalry. So basically, if, you, if we can find a tank or obtain one from any country, we're interested. Wow. Okay, so we don't specialize in just U.S. armor. You know, we try to show the full spectrum. 
there's wars about different countries, different locations, so we try to show it all on the tank side. Well, you know, I'm, I'm very, very fond of armored track vehicles, okay, but, but I was an infantry guy, okay, I walked for a living. <laughs> um, I did go to the armor officer advanced course when I was a young captain, and looking at that turret there, still brings back bad memories of my school days, okay? Because there is a lot of stuff in there. Absolutely. And so this one must be under restoration? Yeah, it has a, uh, the turret ring is, is got froze on this one. So we actually had to pull the turret to figure out what was stuck in the ring. Right. Um, looks like a bunch of gravel got jammed in the ring. You know, uh, they're real, this tank is real bad about that because it was made out of aluminum. So yeah. it was made to be airdropped, so it was, you know. <laughs> yeah, because that was the 82nd thing, yeah. yeah. Okay. They didn't make many of them that got airdropped successfully, you yeah. know, you know, so. Now, do you, you actually rebuild all the, the packs and, and all of the stuff here? Depend, uh, we don't do engine rebuilds in-house. If I need to go that far, I will send an engine out. Gotcha. Um, but as far as vehicle restoration, we pretty much do everything in-house to what my machines can handle. Oh, you know, wow. I don't have full lathes and engine machine chops, stuff like that. So. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about this one. I know it's British. Uh, yeah, it's a um, it's a ferret, uh, fully restored. Um, we got it probably eight or nine years ago. We got it in this condition. Uh, the gentleman had it up for sale. We contacted him. He, he gave us an awesome deal because we were a museum. Wow. And he said he wanted to see it go to a good home. Wow. He restored it to use it for parades. You know, how <laughs> many times do you hear that we want to see it go to a good home? Mm -hmm. I mean, as a collector, those are words to your ear, especially Absolutely. when you're doing something like this as a museum. Okay, now, ah, another main battle tank here. Um, th th this one looks great. Does, this, it, does it run? No, no, this has a, a great story. Uh, Sherman tank, okay, uh, it was buried. Really? It was a mental institute that used it for a bulldozer to push coal for their coal house. It broke down, they didn't know what to do with it, okay? So they dug a hole and pushed it in the hole. My dad comes back 20 years later and hears a story about it. I gotta find this tank. Spends a year trying to find it and actually finds the tank underground and convinces the city to let him dig it up. If you have missed any past episodes of Military Collectors, be sure to go online at militarycollectorstv.com and you can see not only past episodes, but also read in-depth features on the people and their passion of their military collections. Stay tuned, when we come back, we'll feature the history of the flamethrower and have a demonstration of a World War II model. If you're in the market for military surplus for recreation or construction, or you just want to own a piece of military history, go online to GovPlanet.com's weekly auction. GovPlanet has auctions every Wednesday, where you can find and bid on numerous items. All items are protected by ironclad assurance, which makes sure that what's in GovPlanet's report is what you're getting. Be sure to join GovPlanet every Wednesday for their weekly auction, and check in often to see their ever-changing inventory. GovPlanet, your online auction site for government equipment. Northside, performance outdoor footwear for the whole family. How's it going? Hi. Today we're going to be comparing the roll-formed high-strength steel bed of the Chevy Silverado to the aluminum bed of this competitor's truck. Awesome. All right, let him drop. <laughs> Let's see how the aluminum bed of this truck held up. Wow. Oh, that's a good size puncture. That's all the way through for sure. Full on crack here. Here, aluminum now, you're gonna go. Ugh. Let's check out the Silverado steel bed. Wow. Yeah, a couple dents. I'd expect more dents. Chevy clearly held up better than the Ford. Roger that. Welcome back to the show. This week on Military Collectors, we normally don't do this, but because here at the American Armor Foundation Tank Museum in Danville, Virginia, they've got an actual demonstration that they do twice a year here with the flamethrower. We've got one from World War II, and we've also got one from the Vietnam era, and we're gonna actually demonstrate these. But first, let's hear a little bit about the history about the flamethrower throughout the U.S. military. The flamethrower's history can be traced all the way back to the first century AD, where the Greeks used them. In modern times, they were used during World War I and more widely in World War II. 
The flamethrower was first used in modern times in World War I in February of 1915, when the German army used it in battle against French forces. The German army used the flamethrower in over 300 battles during World War I. In 1942, the U.S. Army introduced its own man-portable flamethrower. The vulnerability of infantry carrying backpack flamethrowers which weighed in at over 80 pounds and the weapon's short range led to experiments with tank-mounted flamethrowers. Flamethrowers were used by a large number of countries during World War II and the U.S. Army used them during the Korea and Vietnam Wars. Flamethrowers have not been in the United States arsenal since 1978 because of their ineffectiveness in modern combat and in 2008, the United Nations prohibited the use of flamethrowers during wartime. Well, joining us now is two brothers and the Brothers Team Gasser right here at the American Armor Foundation Tank Museum in Danville. And I'll tell you what, you know, Dan and his brother Doug right here are going to real, they're really going to show us the demonstration of two of these. Again, the World War II, which um, Doug's got on now. But Dan, tell me a little bit about what we can expect to see here. Because again, you guys do this twice a year for the Correct. public. You guys are only one of probably five locations in the United States that actually even has these, Correct. but let alone demonstrate them. Tell us about that. Well, we love playing with flamethrowers. Um, they're great to show the public how they've been used. Um, we have two units to show you. Um, right here, you got the World War II unit. Um, we have it modified to run a torch setup, which is a whole lot safer, right. okay, which is reliable. Um, you got your fuel system right here that delivers your fuel. Your torch lights your fuel. Um, which you basically and this have. is heavy, Doug. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have your two fuel tanks with a, with a pressure gauge on top, your fuel tank, and your regulator. The, f the, f the pressure will actually pressurize the fuel system, right. which actually, when he pulls the trigger, will go through the hose, and then you're going to hear a big fireball. Wow, you so know, pretty simple setup. You know, works very well. You know, but uh, you're going to see some fun here. Well, the, the thing is, I know the view in public loves to see this. I mean, when's the last time you've ever seen, uh, other than in a movie reel or something, actually see the demo like this? No, there's not very many places in the country you can go to even see anybody play with flamethrowers. Oh, okay. and we love playing with them here. You know, All right, right well, there. listen, folks, we're we're gonna stand back here, follow along. We're gonna let Doug get out here on the front lines, okay, and. Now, let's, let's walk all the folks through what you're getting ready to do. All right, he's going to go ahead and pressurize the system. Go ahead. 250, you're good to go. You're clear, no leaks. You're good to go. We're just going to step back here and we're going to watch him so do So the flamethrower is hot. It is hot. Okay. The flamethrower is hot. Quick little burst here. Whew. Now he's going to give you a good burst. Whew. <laughs> There he goes, he's gonna do it up first, gonna make a corkscrew, twist it around a little bit. Oh my goodness. Mm. That That's a flamethrower. Is a flamethrower. <laughs> you know that the, And talk about mm. right, we gotta bleed it out real quick. Okay. Stop, stop, stop it. I'm gonna get it down. So that's going to get all the pressure you off the tanks. Be bleeders open. Bleeders open. is now safe. Oh my goodness. Look at that. You know, I have to say, it looks much better than it does in the movies when you're in person. <laughs> and you know, the thing is, you can't take what these did during wartime lightly. Because Correct. again, can you imagine being on that other end of that thing? Sure. I yeah. mean, you know, and for all of you collectors out there, you veterans, come down to the AAF Tank Museum here in Danville. And you just can't imagine the excitement that you're gonna to see to see one of these that are in an operable condition, you know? I mean, I know, Dan, that, that your dad and, and your mom, when, you know, when they started this, and of course now you two brothers have taken it over. I mean, again, there's just nothing else that I've ever seen in modern day like this, okay? I mean, they don't even do it in the movies. Mm -hmm. They're extreme weapons. They're very extreme, and that's why we like to use them, so people could see what this weapon was about. And it, you see it in movies, it doesn't do it justice. You actually have to see it fired, and you'd be like, wow, that's hot. You know, you back up, you feel your, your skin start getting hot. That's what these weapons are about. When we come back, more flamethrower action from the AAF Tank Museum in Danville, Virginia. Military Collectors is brought to you today by GovPlanet, your online auction site for government equipment, by Chevrolet, 
Chevrolet, find new roads. And by the South Carolina National Guard Museum. Discover the Palmetto State's military history. Northside, performance outdoor footwear for the whole family. How's it going? Hi. Today we're going to be comparing the roll-formed high-strength steel bed of the Chevy Silverado to the aluminum bed of this competitor's truck. Awesome. Alright, let him drop. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how the aluminum bed of this truck held up. Oh, wow. that's a good size puncture. That's all the way through for sure. Full on crack here. Here aluminum now, you're gonna go. Ugh. Let's check out the Silverado steel bed. Wow. Yeah, a couple dents. I'd expect more dents. Chevy clearly held up better than the Ford. Welcome. Hi. Today we're going to be comparing the roll-formed high-strength steel bed of the Chevy Silverado to the aluminum bed of this competitor's truck. Nice. You want to grab that empty toolbox for me? Let's start here with the aluminum bed. That's wow, a big hole. Huge. We got Swiss cheese for a truck here. <laughs> I'm curious to see if that will do the same thing with the Chevy. Well, let's find out. Same spot, same angle, same empty toolbox. Took it way better. The steel held up. Silverado proved it is the toughest truck here. That. Okay, Dan, World War II, steel, heavy, now we got Vietnam era. What was the major differences besides weight? Well, obviously, you know, it was made of aluminum, so a whole lot nicer for the guy. Um, your tank system is a little different. Right. Regulator system is a little different. This tank is designed to be taken off so you can fill it versus that one you fill on it. I okay? got you. Um, still quick, a whole lot easier to use, okay, user friendly, okay, a little more than the other one. Uh, aluminum frame better straps versus the World War II unit. Wow. So, so all around, we like the Vietnam one better. <laughs> well, and you know, guys in the Chemical Corps who had that MOS, mm -hmm. um, they were responsible for these, okay? As, as we called them when I was on active duty, bug and gas. So <laughs> with that, we're gonna have a lot of bugs and a lot of gas here, Doug, okay? Sure. You, you, I'll tell you what, you do this well, my friend, <laughs> huh? Now, let's fire this one. Any difference in the flames? All the same. About the same. We shoot the same pressures, so the fireball will be about the same length. Okay. You know, it's more user friendly. <laughs> I got you. Again, AAF, the Tank Museum, Danville. Oh, I'm telling you, flamethrowers, military collectors is right all over it. All right. Come on, Doug. Right, come on out there. Let's do it again, brother. Pressurize your tank. Watch your valve. Gauge. Go for it. Going hot. And the reason I'm being so quiet, folks, is. 100. Uh, this is kind of too tedious business. Flamethrower is hot. Okay, it's hot. This is not to be taken lightly. Mm. Give you a little burst here real quick. Uh. Imagine let it rip. Look at that. Wow. Now, the, the length of throw for this is what, 50 feet average? Yeah, somewhere around there. Like, okay. so we don't shoot at real high pressures because right. of our antique weapons. Right. You know? So we try to keep it as safe as possible. This, I mean, it's just unfathomable. Of course, you know, guys in 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 the era, they were invaluable. Absolutely. For trench, uh, tunnels, you name it, bunkers, all that sort of stuff. So, all good. All good. Clear. I'll clear in the venting. Letting okay. all the pressure off. Equal out the pressure. Now, as far as how many gallons of fuel does these hold, Dan? Not a whole lot. You're probably looking at uh, about three to four. Yeah. This one holds a little bit less than the World War II I got unit. You. Uh, just because of the way the bottle setup is. I got you. you know. Yeah. Well, with it being made by with aluminum, it makes all the difference. Absolutely. So Absolutely. with yeah. that, I'm telling you. Yeah. If you had to pick which one to put on your back, you want the aluminum one. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I have to say, here at the American Armor Foundation Tank Museum in Danville, over 30,000 exhibits of uniforms, firearms, you name it. It's all right here. And you just need to log on, plan your trip, come up here. I can't tell you about the playground. So even if you're not a veteran, bring the kids. Learn about the history of the American military 
and all of its might through all of this wonderful equipment that you see in this building. Again, it's probably, and I will just venture to say that Redfern said it here, the largest display of armored vehicles and equipment in probably the world right here in Danville, Virginia. All right, man, you're about to bleed down. Turn around here, Doug. Let everybody see you. This is just awesome, guys, I will tell you. And I know that when the viewers come down here to, to see this twice a year, they probably want you to do it every week. <laughs> yeah. But, I'm okay but, with that. There you go. That's this week's episode of Military Collectors. Hey, from my staff sergeant who's looking out for me, the 108 Howards are behind me. It's one of the displays here at the AAF Tank Museum in Danville, Virginia. I'd like to thank all the guys and gals that made our show possible this week. Come on down, log on to militarycollectorstv.com. You'll see the website and you've got to bring the entire family down here. You can't see it in a day. 300,000 square feet of military memorabilia and collectibles right here in Danville, Virginia. Who'd have thought? Well, we want to thank you each and every one of you for watching our show. Military Collectors will be back here next week with another great episode. We'll see you then.